Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all right, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Bluest Spears. Uh, I'm, I think, think I'm used to the hair now. I think I've worked out how to style it. Doing it like rigid and 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 well doesn't work for blue hair. It makes me it makes me look like some kind of fucking incel. I've decided to go with the messy fuckboy look, and I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm looking kinda nice, okay? It looks it's not it's not what I wanted, but it's it's the best I can do. That's what I will say. It's not what I asked for, but it is what I got, and, and I'm making the most of, of a blue situation. So uh, uh, enjoy enjoy it while it lasts, basically. I was streaming the other day and it is so fucking blue that I have a green screen behind me. But this is so, like, neon blue that not only was my streaming program deleting the fucking background, it was also deleting my head. So I looked bald, uh, and that was not a vibe at all. That was not good. You know, I, I, I don't look good bald, which is why I'm very grateful for, for my hairline staying strong. You know, very rigid hairline. It hasn't moved for eight years. Uh, well, it hasn't moved for fucking 26 years. It will not be moving for another 60. So thank you. Um... Speaking of Twitch, the streams have been going amazing. I've been really, really enjoying it. This I had uh, last week was the biggest week I've ever had. Uh, incredible scenes. I've, we've been playing Among Us. We've been playing Phasmophobia. I just launched uh, the the second channel, Lou Two, again. Go and subscribe to that. There's going to be weekly Twitch highlights there. Uh, we hired on a new guy to do the Twitch highlights. That's funded by Patreon, which is fucking awesome. Um, and yeah, man, I uh, had a great conversation with Twitch. I, I talked about this on stream, but I wanted to talk about it with you guys. I've got a real big vision here of bringing stand-up comedy to Twitch. Um, no one's really doing it regularly. There's there's a couple of comedians on there, but no one with like a massive online platform outside of that. No real like solo stand-up comedians that I know of uh, with a giant online platform uh, streaming on Twitch. So I think there's a real good opportunity for me to bring stand-up comedy to Twitch. So had a conversation with them. We've got some stuff in the works. I can't say too much about it, but hopefully something will come of it, obviously when COVID fucks off, but that's very exciting. Uh, I also spoke to them about becoming partner and working together more intimately, and they set me a bit of a challenge that I think uh, you guys could help with. So uh, obviously on Twitch, there's subs. That's how I ended up with blue hair. They told me if I could get 500 tier one subs, they will uh, give me a lot more exposure, put me on the front page a lot more and give me a bit of a better cut because at the moment the cuts i'm gonna be honest fucking dreadful they take half but they'll fucking change that if i can get 500 tier one subs so if you enjoy the streams if you want to help me out if you want to help me bring stand-up comedy to twitch subbing there is 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 a great way to do that now tier one subs they don't count gifted subs they don't count amazon prime subs they mean the tier one sub that you get for yourself. So uh, if you can do that, that would be amazing. That's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I have like 200. I want to get 500. I think it's pretty possible. I just need your help. All right. With that plug out of the fucking way, I, uh, what did I want to talk about here? Um, it's, uh, it's Friday and uh, look, I'm at that point in quarantine. I've fucking, me and my girl, we've, we've, we've given up. We've lost it. The house is a fucking mess. We've started waking up at like 12 p.m. Dumb shit. We started out so good. Every every morning we would both wake up at 6.30, 7.30 in the morning and then we would work real late. We kept the house clean as fuck. We would get everything done. We would be super efficient. I was working out every day. I'm here to tell you guys, uh, quarantine has made me officially lose it. Me and my girl, we don't give a fuck. The house is like, is disgusting. My office looks like Keelan's car. Uh, and that's that's saying a lot. That is absolutely filthy. There's like three-month-old zinger boxes and dead infants on the floor. It's terrible, right? Um, but uh, I'm trying to turn it around. We, me and me and Jazz, we spoke about it today. We were like, "Hey, we've uh, we fucking lost it." It's it's. Over. Is anyone else like that? Has anyone else in who's still in quarantine? Perth, don't listen to this. Sydney, don't listen to this. Adelaide, don't listen to this. Brisbane, don't listen to this. It's only for Melbourne. I'm going nuts, right? Has anyone else reached that point where they've just gone, fuck it, I don't care, no one's coming over? Why do I have to get up in the morning? I can't go to work anyway. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at that point. I've lost it. I've completely lost it. I've, um, 
Hopefully, they will lift some more restrictions on Sunday. I'm recording this on Saturday, on Friday to give it to the patrons early. Um, but uh, if you don't know, I think on Sunday, Daddy Daniel Andrews is going to do another fucking press conference and he might lift the restrictions because I think we're falling below that rolling average that he said uh, we would lift restrictions at. But we're also not below that unexplained cases. He said if we got below the five... A day on average, and then also below these mystery cases, we'll go out. We've hit one, we haven't hit the other, but I think my my quarantine, uh, the uh, the the quarantine. What was it? I've, I haven't made a prediction for so long. What is it? The quarantine, uh, fucking. Oh, the quarantine clairvoyant. My quarantine clairvoyant prediction is he's gonna he's gonna throw us a bone. It's not gonna be a big restriction lift. It's gonna be a scrap. You know. He's going to give us something because I think he has to do that like anti-mask or anti-lockdown protest that I, I saw. That was big. The other ones have been very small. This one was so big. I don't think the cops could shut it down. That was a big one. So he's going to have to give us something. I saw the funniest shit though. This poor woman. Don't you, some, you just got to feel sorry for stupid people sometimes. Sometimes it's okay to laugh. Sometimes it's encouraged to laugh. Most of the time I would say... Ha ah, ha, dumbass, that's what you get for being stupid. But every now and then I feel sorry for a dumb cunt. And it's usually like an old woman who gets sucked into the Facebook shit, you know? Uh, this this woman, fucking idiot. Uh, she goes, two days, right? Actually, you know what? I take it back. I've just, I just started explaining this and I take it back. No sympathy. She's a fucking moron, right? Two days before a scheduled conference to talk about lifting of restrictions, right? So we all knew that there was going to be a conversation about how many restrictions were to be lifted, right? This woman, two days before that conference about how many restrictions should be lifted, she opened up her hairdressers two days before that and went, fuck Daniel Andrews, we're going to open up anyway, fuck him, we need to fight the power, trying to start some revolution of hairdressers opening their fucking stores, right? Two days before that conference, she opens up. And then that same day, right, she opens up early or opens up illegally when it's not safe. She fucking cops a $20,000 fine, right? As you should, okay? I agree with the restrictions for the most part. I think they should be lifting now, but at the time I agreed with it. And I, 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 I mean, if you open up, look, if you open up to, if you, if you really fucking gave a fuck, you, she would have opened up a month before that, right? When it was actually bad. If she really believed in the cause, she should have opened up way before that. The fact that she opened up two days before they were having a discussion about lifting it is dumb as hell. If, if you really wanted to make a statement, you would wait for that fucking conference. And then if they decided not to lift it, the next day you'd be like fuck Daniel I'm doing it anyway right because here's what happened she opened up two days before the conference they find her twenty thousand dollars guess what he announced at the conference hairdressers can open sorry bitch you bet you know she fucking opened up early she gotta pay off that big fine fucking dumb cunt like wait if you I, I I would almost respect her more if she waited and and then they decided not to do it and then she opened anyway. I would have respected her if she did that three months ago. The fact that she did it two days before they were having a discussion about how many restrictions should be lifted shows that she's too dumb to own a business. <laughs> Fuck her, no sympathy. I, I start I felt sorry for her at the start, but then explaining that she did it two days before the conversation is dumb as fuck. That's like two days before your probation in prison, you decide to bash a security guard because you weren't happy about what they gave you for lunch. You know, it's like that's like sure, bash a prison guard, but do it at the start of your sentence, you know? If you have a life sentence, sure. Bash security guards, beat up the pedophiles in the prison. You've got nothing to lose. But if it's two days before your fucking probation, you're dumb, bro. And you deserve everything that's coming to you because you didn't have the smarts to wait until you got denied. Fucking idiot. Uh, that being said, I'm getting, I am getting sick of these restrictions. I really am. Uh, I just hope that when it does get opened up, it's not what happens. We're not going to get a repeat of what happened last time. Because the fucking problem is, the first time we opened up, it was great. We had hardly any cases. We we had rules and all this kind of stuff. And then they open up and all of a sudden social distancing wasn't happening. I didn't see it fucking anywhere. anywhere. No one was wearing masks. Not that it, they had to, but no one was doing it. I was the only cunt wearing a fucking mask, taking it seriously. And like I said on the podcast, I was like, dude, 
We're going to go back in if you cunts don't fucking at least pretend that COVID's real. And then we went back in. So hopefully when we go back out, everyone will have learned their fucking lesson and will actually take this shit seriously. I do hope, though, after we get let out the second time, if the cases do jump back up, I really do hope that we don't go back in because three lockdowns is going to get fucking insane. I think that if we don't beat it after this run, we just have to like protect old people, protect Im- immune immunocompromised people and tell everyone the risks and go, hey, take your fucking vitamins, get a lot of sleep, wear your mask, socially distant, because if you get it, that's it. Um, I don't know. I'm going nuts. I've dude, this is how fucking nuts I've gone. I've I've I'm living so vicariously through Rory Lowe's Instagram stories. Every time that fucking cunt in Perth posts himself performing a show, I just go, man, I wish that was me. I feel like a I feel like a comedy cuck. I'm I'm a comedian cuck. I'm watching all of these other stand-ups please audiences, and I'm just sitting there jacking off in the corner going, I wish it was me. I wish I could do that. But I can't because it's illegal. It's I honestly think, dude, this is the longest. I think the longest I've ever had off stage is like a month. I think I'm going to come back uh, horrific. I'm going to be so bad, dude. Have you ever taken a, like a, like a whole year off something you were really good at? Has anyone done that like due to injury, maybe? Like a sports person, if they take a whole year off because they, I don't know, broke their leg or something. How bad, how quickly did you get your skills back? Has anyone stopped playing the violin for a year and then come back? Were you, were you still good? I don't know. I've never done that before. I've never taken a year off. Some, I know that I used to be a freak at video games. When I was a kid, I took like three years off because of comedy and shit. I came back to it like this year. I'm kind of good. I'm not a, I, I'm, I used to be an absolute freak, but I'm not anymore. That makes me think that's what's going to happen with stand-up. I was fucking incredible. You guys know that. You've seen me. I was fucking awesome. I don't know about what's going to happen when I come back. I'm going to get on and I'll be all nervous. I uh, did have an opportunity, though, to write jokes again, which was awesome. We, on the Luke and Lewis show, I think this video should come out this week. I don't know. It uh, depends on how long it takes to edit. But we decided to do uh, on the main channel of the Luke and Lewis uh podcast on that that youtube channel we decided to do like a main channel video the roast of bluer spears uh, and it was amazing it was such a good opportunity to write jokes again and it's fucking hilarious when that video drops you gotta check it out uh it was uh me luke kidgel rory low keelan ruben even jazz contributed uh and we were all just roasting me like like the fucking roast you see of, of justin bieber but way way less famous uh, and uh, somehow even shit her hair. Uh, it was really great. We, we, I got time to like uh, sit down. I went to the park for hours and just wrote jokes, roasting everyone in there. And it was such a good feeling again to like write stand-up-ish jokes uh, and then perform them to kind of an audience. It was such a, an amazing feeling and it was such a good time it reminded me of how much i fucking miss stand up dude like uh even seeing all of this stand up online so check out that video when it comes out but even seeing like americans being able to do stand up again it makes me so jealous how good was was bill burr's monologue i know i'm kind of late to this cuz it happened last week but fuck it was good he's such a good comedian um his bit about like white women and and just seeing all these white women getting angry about it, but all of these black women going, we fucking told you bitches you stole it from us. We've been saying this and just agreeing with him. It was, it was so good. Although it made me angry. I had such a similar joke. Like it's, it's the same. It's, I did it in a completely different way, but it's the same premise. If you saw, I think it was my most recent tour, I believe yeah, I think it was my most recent show. The, the premise is the same that I used to do. Now, I, I don't know if I can do the joke anymore because Bill Burr did it. Like, obviously, he didn't copy me. There's no way we could have seen each other's material. It's just like the same It's the same premise of like, my my joke was, yes, mine was more from, from a man's perspective. Yes, straight white men are at the top, but I don't understand why straight white women are the ones spearheading the movement against us 
I suppose it's kind of different. My joke was kind of like, why are white, straight white women attacking straight white men? We're on the same team. You bitches don't realize that, yes, we're number one. We have a better deal than you, but you're a very close second. That was kind of my joke of like, we did this together and now you're snitching. What do you think is going to happen when the world takes us down? You're going down with us. That was like my joke. I suppose, you know what, saying it, maybe it is kind of different. It is the same premise of white women are hijacking the social justice movement uh, while being ignorant to the fact that they benefited almost as much as straight white men, basically. That was my premise. But it, it is, the, it's, the, it's a different, done in a different way, but it's exactly the same premise of, hey, white women, what are you doing? You're just as bad as us. Um, so I don't know if I can do that joke anymore. It, I, I suppose it's it's different enough, but well, I don't know. We'll have to see. It, it, that watching Bill Burr was so hilarious, but so infuriating. Of like, oh no, this is the same thing I was saying. Fuck. Um, and let's be honest, it's Bill Burr, so it was a little bit better than mine. <laughs> uh, but you know that that does happen. I, I remember like that happened to Andrew Schultz. I think he had this. I watched him when I was in New York. He did this incredible joke about Michael Jackson, and his premise was, um, "Man, how amazing would it be to get fucked by Michael Jackson? It's Michael Jackson. How that's like you know the gold digger famous thing of like if you want to get fucked by a pedophile." Michael Jackson's as good as it's going to get. It's Michael Jackson, right? That was his joke. And then I remember thinking, fuck, that's such a cool idea and such a funny joke. And then like uh, maybe 18 months after that, I saw it. Andrew Schultz do it. 18 months after I saw him do it, Dave Chappelle comes out with his Netflix special and it's like the same premise of it's Michael Jackson. How cool is that? And I was like, I felt so sorry for him. I was like, fuck. And then he complained about that on his podcast. It it does happen, you know, like you have... um, it's absolutely not joke theft, but often, you know, you just have parallel thinking. You know, wasn't that the, wasn't that the explanation for every single one of Amy Schumer? She's just an expert parallel thinker. You know, you get one, you get one or two, maybe three. I'll give you three. Fifty-five minutes. I don't know about that. You know, um, but it does happen. It, it's it's just something that you just kind of have to deal with. Um, I've dropped jokes before because sometimes people will be like, hey, dude, that's like a good joke, but that, have you heard this one? I was like, oh, fuck, dropping that. It's the same fucking bit. Happens all the time with The Simpsons. Like that's that's uh, like Luke and Lewis, we always go, oh, why don't we, why don't we do this? Because I'm I never really listened to Hamish and Andy, but Luke was obsessed with it. So often I'll be like, oh, why don't we fucking do this and then we'll do that? And he'll go, Hamish and Andy have done that. I'll go, fuck. <laughs> and it's like, it just happens, you know, parallel thinking. It, it is it is a thing. Um, the, the, the trick is though, if, it, if you do catch it, you kind of got to stop um, before you end up compromising yourself but i don't know maybe 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 my joke is is dissimilar enough to bill burr's that i could do it when i come back lord knows one by the time i do come back no bill burr might be fucking dead it could be 20 30 years from now whenever stand-ups back um i don't know i you know what else has been happening i've been living that's what i was saying i've been living like in my head so much because i've always been like an in my head i always talk to myself i always have conversations to myself i'm I'm like that i mean that's what this podcast is i was like dude i've been talking to myself since i was fucking 10 i might as well monetize it <laughs> might as well turn it into something so i'm always in my head talking to myself and, and often it, it just leaves me being vague and i forget shit and i just do dumb things i always forget my keys or whatever um, yeah, but yesterday, I uh, yesterday morning, I, I went down to the walk down the street to the cafe, and it was the first time I was wearing no hat with my blue hair. I was like, ah, oh, should I fucking wear a hat? Ah, oh, whatever. The cafe already noticed when I was wearing a beanie. I might as well just go no hat. So I fucking went out and I put on my clothes and I went out to the cafe to go get my coffee. And I, I walked all the way down to the cafe and everyone's fucking looking at me like I'm some freak. I'm like, oh, whatever. The blue hair's... I was I remember thinking, the blue hair's not that bad. What the fuck? Why is everybody looking at me? And I get all the way to the door of the cafe and then I realize, oh, fuck, I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> I forgot my fucking mask, dude. I walked all the way there. Everyone was staring at me. I didn't even realize. They probably thought I was some anti-masker cunt. That's the second time I've done that where I've walked into a store, no mask, and I, it's just because I'm dumb. Surely we need to have some thing, some... Can we just think, give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? 
I've got blue hair. There's no way I'm doing that on purpose. Anyone with blue hair is wearing two masks while they cancel their family on Twitter. Give me the benefit of the doubt, bro. I got so embarrassed. I felt like such a fucking idiot. I just stopped and I was like, oh, I'm not wearing a fucking mask. I turned straight around and I went home. And then I wanted to be like, well, fuck, I hope that everyone who saw me with no mask will see me come back with a mask, you know, because otherwise they're just going to go home and be like, yeah, so it turns out Lewis Spears is an anti-masker. <laughs> I felt so fucking stupid, man. I went home, I put on the mask, I walked all the way back. Other people were there. A few people, when they saw me the second time, there was there was a lot of people that had a lot of relieved laughter. They were like, oh, oh, oh thank God, he's just a fucking idiot. You know? At least at least he wasn't a fucking idiot, you know? It's a different... It, they're both dumb, but it's a different... It's a less malicious type of dumb, you know? I felt so, so fucking stupid. If I wake up tomorrow and I can't breathe, it's my own fault. Oh, fuck. Has anyone else done that? Surely I'm not the only person that has, like, forgotten to wear a mask. I really do hope that. You know, because I've done it twice, though. I think I might be the only person who has forgotten a mask and then done it again. You know? It was the first time I did it, I was, uh, I was in the car. Because I take it off in the car. Because you don't need it in the fucking car. You see, you ever see those people that are driving by themselves in a car and they're wearing a mask? Hey, bro, you're dumb. I appreciate you trying, but you're just dumb and it makes, for some reason, that makes me angry. Like, why are you doing that to yourself? You can take it off in the car, all right? If there's other people in the car and you don't live with them, sure, right, keep it on, whatever. But if you're in the car by yourself, for the love of God, take your fucking mask off, you moron, right? So I don't wear a mask when I'm in the car. Uh, and I pulled up to the servo station. Well, Jazz pulled up the servo station because I'm 26 years old and I don't have a license. And I want to get my license, but it's illegal to do fucking driver's lessons. That's a rule that doesn't make sense. Anyway, so we pull up and I fucking... I've already told this story, but I'm telling it again because it's the only thing that's happened to me in the last six months. We pull up and uh, Jazz goes, oh, can you just get some firewood? I'm like, yeah, cool, no worries. And I go into the servo station, I get some firewood and I go up to the, 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 the fucking girl at the counter and she's looking at me like I'm some kind of freak. She was so rude to me. I was like, what's, what's this fucking... What's this bitch's problem? Why is she being such an asshole? I walk out, this other guy's mean mugging me. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy looking at? I'm getting... I'm getting heated. I'm angry. I'm like, am I going to have to fucking fight some people? Am I going to get this fucking wood out and use it as a weapon? What's going on? Right? And then I get back in the car and I go, oh, I wasn't wearing a mask. Fuck! So that, that was the first time I did it. And then, then then yesterday I did it again. So I, I don't think I'm the first person. I don't think I'm the only person to leave the house forgetting their mask. But i got to be one of the first people to do it twice. You know? Let me know. Comment below. Have you done that before? I want to know. Have you done it twice? I want to know. Have you done it three times? If so, see a specialist. There's something wrong with your brain. Um, but yeah, that's that's all that I've been doing, really. Um, what else has been happening here? Uh, I've A little update on, on the ducks at the park. I've gained their trust. They will now eat out of my hands. That's what I've been working on during quarantine. Uh, we are back to doing the uh, main channel videos. I got something out last week. I'm getting something up in the uh, next couple of days as well. That should be out on Monday or Tuesday, so I'm excited about that. I'm doing quarantine cringe. If you see any cringe moments, send them through to me. Tweet me or email them. Uh, send them to me on fucking Insta or Facebook if you're 60 years old. Um, I'd love to see that. Um, but uh, that's 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 like literally the the extent of what I have done is I've lost control of my life. I've forgotten my mask. I got roasted, and uh, I'm trying to get more subs on Twitch. Is there anything else that I have done? No. Nah. The presidential debates were on today, Friday. I'm recording this, uh, and uh, I, I don't know. The first ones were so boring. I, I didn't watch it. And uh, looking at Twitter, it seems like these ones were even more boring because they, they stopped the ability for the other people to interrupt each other, which ironically was my main complaint about the first one. But with them not being able to do that, that is now the reason why I won't be watching the next ones because they can't interrupt each other. So it'll be more civil and boring. I think that uh, judging from Twitter, I don't know, it looks kind of boring. Bro, I'm so excited to watch Borat. Uh, I'm fucking pumped to watch that shit. You know what I lo you know what I fucking loved? You know how fucking vindicated I felt 
when Amazon Prime released Borat 2, right? And do you know how they advertised that? You know what their main avenue for advertising the new Borat film was? It wasn't fucking billboards. It wasn't radio ads. It wasn't mainstream television ads. It was going direct to people like me, influencers in this country. Frenchie was one of the main people I saw fucking advertising it. Tom from Tom and Frenchie, a bunch of other influencers, big people on TikTok were doing Borat things. They went straight to David Dobrik, bro. Sasha Baron Cohen doing videos with David Dobrik. It's fucking over for all you cunts that made fun of the YouTube comedian. The on like, I'm sorry, it's over for you. They didn't come to you. you. You're on TV. You're on radio. They didn't come to you, cunt. You know what I think when I see that? I think, all right, it's now a matter of time before we start getting those Amazon Prime specials. It's a matter of time before one of us is on Netflix. Auntie Donna just got their own Netflix series. It's fucking happening. If you doubted the power of the internet, it's over for you. I'm sorry. It's We're not even the future anymore. We're the present. Guess what you are, cunt? The past. All those cunts that talk shit about me when I started, me blowing up on Facebook, calling me shit, talking shit about me on Twitter when I, when I launched my crowdfund, when I did all this kind of stuff. Hey guys, where are you now? You, are you, do you have a job? Are you at a cafe yet? You making money out of comedy? You're not. I'm still paying my employees. My employees are working harder in comedy than you cunts are now because you were fucking running against the tide. And guess what? That You're floating. You're underwater. You just drowned, bro. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it always, when I, when I see that shit, it just reminds me to like poor old fucking 2013, 14 Lewis who just wanted to become a stand-up comedian. I got the most hostile fucking reception from all of these cunts. And I thought, oh, it broke my little heart. I was like, oh, fuck, I saw you on TV. I saw you on the gala. I wanted to be you. And you fucking treat me like this? That sucks. Hey, guess who's not on Centrelink? <laughs> Me. Um, not that I should be laughing at people losing their livelihood in a, in a pandemic. That's very not good of me. But you know what? It's a little bit fine because it's my field, you know? And they started it. All right. Anyway, guys, that's enough of me being insane and bitter. Shall we move on? I think we should. This might be a short episode, guys. I'm not going to fucking lie. This may be a short fucking episode. Um, what else was there to talk about? Well, you know what? Why don't we have a look in the news? Why don't we have a look and see what is happening in the news? This is the problem. This is why I've been struggling with main channel content. There's nothing in the fucking news other than doom and bullshit. Where are we? Hmm. Oh, man, that Ghislaine Maxwell shit. That's great. Uh, so if you don't know... Ghislaine Maxwell, she got arrested and then she just fucking disappeared. Shut up. Um, but they uh, had a deposition with her and uh, the they fought to hide the transcripts. A deposition is basically they just sit down with her. Her and a lawyer just sit down and they go... Did you know this person? Did you know that person? What about this person? How about what happened on this day? Da -da 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 -da. For fucking hours... Uh, and they fought to keep the transcripts of that private. Uh, well, I think yesterday, yeah, Thursday, they released a 418-page transcript. Uh, uh, it contains redacted... Oh, for fuck's sake, are you kidding? It contains redacted details of Prince Andrew's infamous London trip, where it is alleged he had sex with a victim of Epstein, something the Duke of York denies, pedo dog stone him, and other revelations about life with Epstein. The new trove was part of a 2015 defamation lawsuit brought by Epstein's trafficking victim, Virginia Joff Jeffrey Joffrey, after Maxwell called her a liar. Love that. She's like, oh, you calling me a liar? Well, guess what? I'm suing you for defamation. Now you have to prove that I'm a liar. Otherwise, I get your bank balance. What a sick bitch. Following Maxwell's arrest in July, there were calls to make public the contents regarding her relationship with the late finan financier pedophile. This is great. Uh, on Monday, the Manhattan Circuit Court of Appeals rejected an argument by Maxwell that the files impede her defense and that the tranche of documents was made public. That's fucking good. 
What's in the documents? The documents reportedly show, yeah, this is this is the thing. You're gonna have to if it's 418 pages, we're gonna have to wait a week, basically, for journos and and conspiracy nuts to go through that. The documents reportedly show that Maxwell tried to play down links between Epstein and former US President Bill Clinton, who had used a billionaire's private plane many times. Yes, what's that about? She was also asked about speculation Epstein may have performed work for the US and Israeli governments. I'm sorry, uh, did you say speculation or absolutely proof? (laughs) Where is he? Portions of the document apparently related to a picture of a young Virginia Roberts taken in London were also heavily redacted and show Maxwell saying she could not recall who's taken the image. Disgusting. A nude picture. Oh, there's a nude picture of Maxwell. Fuck. She goes, all right. Looking at it right now. Um, It's just a bunch of fucking crazy shit. Horrific stuff. I hope that she doesn't die. I really, really hope she doesn't get kill herself in quotation marks because she's so important. And with Epstein gone, hopefully she'll just, she'll just roll on everyone. Does she have kids? Does Ghislaine Maxwell have children? See, this is the thing. If she has kids, we might not find out what happens. But if she doesn't have kids, oh, she's got two sisters. Hmm. She's got sisters. Okay. See, that's what I'd be worried about. If she has no kids, I'd be like, oh, well, she got no kids. Her parents might be dead or dying. Uh, then great. Can't really hold anything about it, uh, against her. Her fucking boyfriend's dead. But her sisters are still alive. That's a shame that she has sisters. That's uh, a bit of leverage they can hold over her. I'm going full conspiracy this episode. This is what happens when I don't have enough to to talk about. I fall back on being bitter about what happened when I fucking started comedy and and also conspiracy theory. Um, So (laughs) uh, that's where my life is going, guys. You know what? Fuck it. I think that uh, we've uh, established I have nothing else to speak about. Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Let's do a bit of miss bit. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end uh, is the uh, worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions sent in by you, the loyal listener. If you if you need some life advice, if you have a story you think would make the podcast better, uh, please do uh, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, and uh, yeah. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, Before I do that, if you want to support the show, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. You get access to the Discord. I do an extra half hour of the podcast every single week. That only goes up for Patreon supporters. Uh, Last last week uh, on the Patreon episode, I actually, I've been doing more behind the scenes stuff and I, I, I did what I'm told is a really good episode. So I thought I'd tell you about it. Last week I talked about, um, uh, just how to get a job in this. Uh, not so much how to become a YouTuber or become a comedian, how to get a job as a behind the scenes person. So I talked about how I hire people, how I hired my most recent Twitch guy, how I hired Keelan, Ruben, uh, how Luke hires his people and just how to proactively find a job as an editor, as a photographer, as a music producer, or as a guy who records anything basically is any type of behind the scenes person how to get a job in the new wave because how to get a job in mainstream television and mainstream media and radio that's like very difficult and it's a very beaten path and there are steps to it that are pretty obvious if you google it or you know go through uni or, or, or whatever the traditional method is the traditional method i'm talking about how to work for someone like me uh, a a a, t- a famous uh, YouTube, I'm not famous, but for example, how to work for a famous gamer or a famous rapper or or people who blow up using the online thing. How to work for those people and how to put yourself out there. So if that interests you and you, you want to hear that, it's on my Patreon. Um, all right. So I've got this email here from someone insecure about my back. Hey, Lewis, I love your shit. In last week's episode, you talked about how to be more confident. One of your main pieces of advice was to have good posture. I can't do this as I have Schurman's disease. What the fuck is that? Schurman's disease. Let's Google that. 
Are you sure, man? <laughs> what the fuck is Shulman's disease? Oh, it's like just fucks you back, like scoliosis or whatever. I have Shulman's disease, which is where your spine doesn't grow straight and it's more of an S-shape. Okay. This means I have a hunch and I'm always slouching. This has had a serious effect on my self-confidence and has made me very insecure. Any advice would be great on what other things I can do to help with my confidence. Have a shit one, Josh. Yeah, so... Uh, obviously, look, I'm not disabled, uh, but I do have a weird body, right? I, I, um, I'm not disabled. There's nothing wrong with me, but I definitely have a strange body type, right? So uh, I suppose I have the, the opposite problem to you. I'm, you, I, I guess this makes you shorter. This, I'm too tall. Uh, so basically, look, self-confidence comes from a few different areas it's not so, it's not there is no one answer so i said last episode things like standing up straight things like making eye contact holding your head up that all that stuff helps but it doesn't give you confidence it just adds to your self-confidence i there are so many different ways to do it the main thing the main way to be more self-confident is is to is i think I, I've thought about this a lot and I think the best way to get some confidence is to be good at something um, and not like be uh, the top 1% but just to be good at something you know whether that's fucking being really smart or being a really good reader having an interest and knowing about that a lot uh, can really really add to your self-confidence if you're like even games and shit if you're really fucking good at a game you like to play that can add to a lot of confidence because you become more of who you are, right? Um, and also things like just talking to people all the time. Practice makes perfect. You can practice and learn self-confidence. I really believe that because I wasn't always the most confident person. I was always a very reserved, shy person. I mean, you you, you guys know me. Like, I don't... I'm not a, a very outgoing person, you know? Like, it's... Like, I like this where it's just me, nobody else... Uh, and it's just talking. I don't particularly like big group scenarios. I like one-on-one -on -one shit, but I don't like... I've never been the most outgoing person that wants to talk to people. But I, I started off as... I, I'm able to do that now, but I learned how to do it, basically. Because I started off as a very uh, very in-person, a very, very like, in-my-shell. I remember in primary school, uh, this teacher was always trying to get me to come out of my shell because he saw it was in there, and he was trying to get me to come out of it. I never really wanted to do it, but... I basically, not doing that became more and more of a problem as I grew up and as I went into high school. And uh, what I learned was just fucking sucking it up and trying to talk to people. Uh, because a great thing about trying to talk to people, if you're not very good at it, is that if you fuck it up, you learn something. Uh, and I think for, for your confidence, you what a really good thing to learn and a really hard thing to learn at the same time is... No one gives a fuck about you as much as you do, right? Some people care about you. Your parents, they give a fuck heaps. Really close friends, they give a fuck. Really close partners, they give a fuck. But ultimately, anyone outside that tiny less than five people, right? Really, if you think about it. Like, I only have, like, two really, really close friends, right? I have lots of friends, but, like, real, like, brothers, real close people. Two, maybe three that are real close, like a reciprocal relationship, you know what I mean? Then I have my parents, my two parents, and then my grandparents, uh, and it's kind of it. My brother, I suppose. Let's, you know, about five, less, definitely less than 10 people who truly, truly care about you uh, in a way that you also care about you, right? And even then, it's not as much, right? No one will ever care about you as much as you do. That's a, it's a hard thing, but it's also a very liberating thing to realize. Um, and what I would say to you, Josh, is uh, no one gives a fuck about your back. Like outside of that real close, no one gives a fuck, bro. So people will see you and you might feel really insecure. You might feel, oh, what do people fucking think about this? They, I promise you, bro, you're nothing more than a passing thought. Of, oh, oh, the guys, anyway, I've got other problems. My fucking mom has cancer or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like your back is an issue for you. Outside of that, I mean, I don't give a fuck about it. If I saw you at my show, I'd be like, oh, that guy's got a hunch. I don't give a fuck about that. I'll forget about you. And that's what everyone else in, in your life will also think. And that's a hard thing to accept. 
Because, oh, no one cares about me. Ooh, it's easy. You can go one or two ways of that. You can either go, oh, no one cares. Oh, fuck, I'm sad. No one gives a fuck about me. Uh, and, and that ultimately is coming from a selfish place of you feel like people should care about you. And the answer to that is, why should they? They got a job. They got bills. They got kids. They got a partner. What are you bringing to them that they should give a fuck about you? It's a little bit different if it's like, you know, your mum. Of course, if your mum doesn't give a fuck about you, of course, that's going to break your heart. But if it's like just people in general, I used to get like this. In high school, I had a, a lot of uh, a lot of like friendly acquaintances. I didn't have many friends. And this always used to get to me. I'd be like, oh, no one fuck cares about me. And I, it used to really, really get me down. Uh, and then one day something in my brain just clicked of like, hang on, why should they give a fuck about me? I don't do anything for them. What do I bring to the table? I fucking sit in a classroom and I don't talk to anyone and then I go, oh, no one wants to talk to me. Why the fuck would they? What value am I bringing to them? They look at me and they go, oh, he doesn't want to talk to me. I'll respect his wishes. Why the fuck would they give a fuck about me? You know, you got to be proactive with this shit. So something that's very liberating and very difficult to accept is no one gives a fuck about you. And one way, there's two ways you can go about it. One way, which is the way that I went for a while, which was, oh, life sucks. No one cares about me. This is sad. This sucks. They should. And that's coming from a place of selfishness. The other way, the healthier way you can look at this is no one gives a fuck about you. Guess what? You know how liberating that shit is? No one cares about your back. No one cares about how fucking tall I am. People will look at me. I got the same thing as you, bro. People will look at me and go, oh, fuck, that guy's tall. Maybe a little child will go, wow, look how big he is. That's what people think. They just learn to not yell that out, right? But ultimately, they don't give a fuck about me. And if they got to know me, I'm not that freak anymore. I'm Lewis, right? So what you need to get to is you just need to get past that first impression. That's all it is. It's just a first impression. It's just, oh, that guy's got a bit of a hunch. But if they find out how you know cool you are or how good you are at this game or this sport or this whatever the fuck you're into, you can start building a relationship with that person. So ultimately, bro, you are obviously insecure about your back. And I prob probably would be if I was in the same situation. And you care about this. But I'll be real with you, bro. I don't give a fuck. You're an, you're an email to me. If I saw you in person, I, I would you be the guy that I pass on the street and I go, oh, look at that guy. And then I wouldn't give a fuck about it ever. And if I met you and I started to get to know you, sure, the first thing I see is that, but then I'm going to forget about it if we get along. Obviously, not everyone's going to get along with you, but even if they don't get along with you, you're going to be that guy that kind of pissed them off because they said the wrong thing, not because of your back, you know? So ultimately... No one other than you and the five people that really care about you give a fuck about your hunch. Knowing that is so liberating that you can go, oh, no one gives a fuck. I can do whatever I want. I can just go on and just live my life and I will find those people. That's what really liberated me. It, my mindset went from, oh, no one cares about me to, oh, no one cares about me. I can do whatever I want because ultimately any consequence of my decision, as long as, you know, they are decisions that don't hurt other people, it's only going to negatively affect me really, or it will positively benefit me. So who cares? I'll do whatever the fuck I want, you know? People have problems. There's people with skin diseases. People are short. My brother's got eczema. I, I'm a fucking tall freak. You get over it. No one cares. At the end of the day, no one other than the five people care. And then even then, those five people, they can't do anything about it. So they will just forget about it and it won't affect your relationship with other people. So my advice to you, mate, is I don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Why should you? Go out and live your life, bro. Practice is my other advice. Talk to people. Make those fuck-ups. Have those weird conversations. Be that weird guy. Who cares? Again, you know? Wait, honestly, can you think about six months ago when you met a, a, a weird person? I'm not talking like a crazy person that leaves an impression. Remember that guy that you talked to that you didn't really get along with uh, and then you kind of moved on and you thought, oh, that guy was weird. What's his name? What was he wearing? What shape was his back? You can't even remember these people. And I know that if you were the weird person in that scenario, you'd probably remember who you talked to and fucked up the conversation. 
They don't. And that's such a liberating thing to think of because ultimately what that means for you is you can go out and practice being social, practice talking to girls, practice making friends, practice telling someone about your weird interest that maybe you think is strange, but who knows, you'd love a friend. God knows you'd love a friend who is also into that thing. Practice, make the fuck ups, meet those people because they don't give a fuck about you until they do. You see what I mean? No one gives a fuck about you until they do. And those people, those less than 10 people in your life that truly matter, when you get those people, you're set. I've got them. Life's great on this side. I was on the other side for a long time where I had lots of casual acquaintances. People did not like me, but no one really wanted to be my friend. No one really liked me. I didn't have like a, like a good friend. But that was because of me. I was inside myself and I didn't put myself out there and I lived in my shell and I waited for other people to make the move. Guess what? That doesn't happen unless you're a hot chick. You know? So from this email, mate, it doesn't sound like you've got a pair of double Ds, so you need to go to work, my friend. (laughs) All right? That's my advice to you. Practice and no one gives a fuck. All right. Here we go. We've got one email here. We'll wrap up with this one and then I'm going to do the uh, Patreon podcast. This one's come in. Hey, Lewis. My name is Rob. I'm 18 and I love your content. Oh, this is dealing with my crazy religious parents. I'll be seeing you in Perth whenever you're able to start touring again, whenever that might be. Bro, fuck, I'm jealous. Um, I come from an extremely Catholic family. My family goes to mass every week and obviously participates in and believes in a bunch of crazy shit. I myself am an atheist. I have no problem at all with religion. Uh, I think everyone should be able to believe whatever they want if it makes them happy. And I can obviously see the value in some of its aspects. However, I think it should never be forced on anyone, especially when it involves parents brainwashing their children from an early age and throughout their upbringing. Yeah, I, yeah, I mostly agree with you. I'm actually not an atheist. I believe in a higher power. I just don't know if any one religion has the answer. My view on religion is I think that we were created. I think this world is so perfect in the way that it works that I believe in the Big Bang and evolution and everything. But ultimately, I keep going back and I keep looking at how perfectly everything works together and how, how, how before, obviously, humans fucked it up, right? with technology and all that kind of stuff. But I look at how perfect everything is and how perfectly everything works with each other. And I just can't stop thinking that that big bang was a creator going and I'm finished. Go. Um, but I. that being said, I am not sure that I think that this creator, this God that made the world is so powerful and so in a different dimension or whatever the fuck you want to call it in a different plane of existence and is so powerful that uh, if we could understand it and if we could comprehend what this all-powerful being thinks and interpret their messages through a religion or whatever, that to me makes that God not God anymore. Because if they were so powerful and so much more than us and so much more incredible and, and, and just so unexplainable, unexplainably amazing, we as humans would not be able to communicate with it. That's what I think. Like I think us, a God to us is like us to a single cell organism. They couldn't begin to comprehend the power, the smarts, the ability that we have, I think the same about whatever made us. That's how I kind of view it. So I think every religion has the vibe right, you know, of there is some higher power and it did create us. And maybe it half cares about us and maybe it wants us to be good people. But even if it doesn't, we should do that anyway. Uh, That's how I kind of view it, Um, is that, There's something out there, and I think it created us, but I don't think we can interpret what it says. 
I think that's like a Coptic Christian way of looking at it. I had, a, I had an Egyptian boss and he was a Coptic Christian. He came from like uh, Egypt where, where they regularly get their churches burned down. He's, he was like a refugee, like a real uh, a refugee, refugee, like got approved and everything. Um, and uh, he had a really lovely way of looking at it. He was super religious and he was super, he was a Coptic Christian, which is very like orthodox and a very specific way of doing it. And I was like, so what's, what's your like thing of heaven? And he goes, look, our thing of heaven is that it is so amazing and so beautiful and heaven is where God lives and and it's very nature and the very nature of how powerful and amazing God is. We as humans are so lesser and so much, so much less uh, amazing and don't have the powers that he, he has that we literally couldn't comprehend what heaven is like and we're not taking our bodies there. We're taking our souls there and we can barely even comprehend what our souls are. But all we know is that it is a part of God and it's uh, we're, it's God-like, but it's nothing like him. Uh, and I always thought that was kind of beautiful of like, oh, man, uh, that's a really nice way of looking at it. It's like we can't even comprehend what God is like. So we should just try our best to be good. And uh, if we are good, maybe he'll will be a little bit close or we'll live in the same realm as him. That's I like that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. I think it should never be forced on anyone, blah, blah, blah. However, that's this is the case for my family. My parents have raised myself and my siblings to be Catholic and have, be, and have been obsessed with sheltering me from the outside world for my whole life. Uh, they'd be so mad you're listening to me, bro. My parents believe that if you are not religious, then you are either weak or a radical hedonist. Ooh. One thing they often recite to me is action without faith is sin. Oh, E.g., even if you are Mother Teresa, no matter how many sick kids you save, you are still evil unless you do it for God. That sucks. Yikes. Yeah, I agree. That's fucking... That's ignorant as fuck. Like, you... That's so fucked because by that logic, a bad person who is religious is better than a good person who is not. And that's insane. Because if I'm God and I want people to be good... If they don't believe in me, but they do good things, versus a guy who fucks kids but is a priest, guess who I like more? According to the Pope, the guy who fucks the kids, obviously. But <laughs> if I were God, I'd prefer the dude that does well, even if he doesn't know my name. That's yeah, that's 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 frustrating to 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 read, basically. Um, they are especially controlling regarding girls. Every time I leave the house, my mum asks me if I'm going to meet a secret girlfriend, even when I'm just going to work, uni, or for a run. I am not exaggerating. She does this even though I've liter literally never done anything that would break her trust or cause her to think otherwise. Obviously, the fact I'm an atheist can creates a bit of a conflict. I have not told my family that I don't believe in God. Yeah, okay, that's hard. For years, I've been able to just play along and keep my head up while going to mass or doing whatever else they make me to do, make me do. Sometimes I'm able to find an excuse to go to mass by myself at a different time to the rest of the family uh, when I just go for a drive or a walk or often listen to your podcast if it's out of, if it's out on time. Hey, fuck you, bro. I'm banning you from mass. That's so fun. How sinful is that? Telling your parents you're going to to church and you listen to my podcast, dude, I, I was, I take it back, mate. You are a bad person. You're going to hell. <laughs> if that's what you're telling them, you listen to this, that's a breach of trust. Um, no, it's all, I'm just joking, dude. The consequences, the consequences of going against the grain far outweigh the inconvenience of just allocating a time to go to mass. However, I have reached the point uh, where I don't feel as though I can keep pretending any longer. That's like coming out of the closet, dude. Kinda. I feel like I should just outright tell them how I feel, but obviously this will cause them to freak out. I still live at home, so this would have some serious implications. If you could give me some decent advice, that would be ideal at the very least. I hope this provides some content for the show. At, at the very least, I hope this provides some content for the show. Have a shit one. <sighs> okay, this is a hard one. I haven't gone through this, but I do know people who have. And my advice to you would be you're 18 you have a job i don't know the specifics of the situation it sounds like they are very hardcore and it sounds like they would be they would it would be pretty bad 
for them to find that out. Would they abandon you and make your life hard? This, so this is the question you need to ask. How hard will your life become if you live at home and they know that you're not religious? How hard will they make your life? If it will be awkward and uncomfortable and sometimes you would have shit conversations, I would say sh- tell them anyway. It's better to be honest and and do it in a way. Oh, however you come out, it can't be mean. You can't uh, tell them that they're wrong. You just need to say, I respect your faith and I'm glad that it brings you a lot of things. It just doesn't do it for me and I'm really sorry that I don't believe. I just don't. Uh, and and I would appreciate if you didn't try and force it on me. If you want to talk about God, I will I will listen to you because I love you and you're my mom, you're my dad, whatever. And I'm always happy to talk about it. But but please just know, at this moment in my life, I don't believe in it, and uh, I I don't want to have I don't want you to try and convert me. That's what I would try and get across if you came out because it is like you're coming out, kind of. Um, uh, I would just say, I respect your beliefs and I love that you have them and I love that about you. But unfortunately, I don't think the same way and I'm happy to talk to you about it, but I really don't want you to try and convert me, please. Um, that's how I would probably go about it. But uh, before that, there's a question you have to ask is how hard do you think your life's going to be? So, if, if I was in your situation, I would be like, look, if this is going to make my life really hard and really bad, like if me coming out is going to make them uh, not let me leave the house or they're always going to be, they're going to be horrifically angry or they're, they're not going to let me stay in the house, you know, like if they, if they kick me out of the house, as, you know, I suppose it goes for gay people too. Like if you're, if you coming out, is going to get you booted from your home and is going to put you in an unsafe situation, I would recommend don't come out until you have an exit plan. So you have a job, you're at uni. Uh, I don't know how feasible it is to get enough money to be in a position to move out. But if you can do that uh, and you have enough money to, if it does get really bad, move out, then yeah, tell them. Uh, and do it as best you can, so that way that if it if it goes great, awesome, then you can stay and try and live eat, despite your differences. Or if it goes bad, okay, cool, you can get out of that toxic re- environment. Because the last thing you want is to come out, be broke, and be stuck in this toxic environment where you can't live your life, and it's fucking awful, and you can't get out. Um, whereas what would probably be better is to just wait a little bit longer until you can get yourself to a point where you can move out and then tell them and then move out or move out and then tell them basically because you don't want to put yourself in an, in an unsafe situation where you get booted and you have no money and you are on the street and blah, blah, blah. That happens to gay people all the time. I, I would assume that for religious people, it's not as bad and that doesn't happen as often, but you know, I'm sure it does happen. So that would be my advice to you. If you think it's going to be poison and toxic and terrible, just don't tell them. Let it sit uh, and then get yourself into a position where you can live independently, move out and then tell them. That's my advice. Um, If, however, you think that it might be, you know, it's either way, it's going to be an awkward conversation and it might not be a pleasant conversation. But if you think that ultimately you will be able to find uh, a healthy balance uh, and, and and a good way to live, even though you don't believe like they do, sure, tell them and just tell them in a way that, makes it clear that you love them and you don't hate the faith and you don't think they're dumb and and you think that religion for them is a good thing or, or, or whatever. Uh, just don't do it in a cunty, edgy, atheist way and respect the same from them. Re- ex- explain that you expect the same from them. I'm not going to convince you to be atheist. Please don't convince me to be religious. I'm happy to discuss, but if we get heated, I'm not going to have any of it. Um, but if you think doing coming out will make it a toxic environment... I would just not tell them. I would continue what you're doing. Um, but my priority would be to get enough money so that you can move out because ultimately you can't pretend forever, obviously. Uh, and if uh, the the decision between living a lie, I suppose this goes for gay people too, the decision between living a lie uh, so that you can stay with your parents versus uh, living your true life away from them 
and fucking up the relationship, but you're in a safe space and you can be you and you can be happy, they'll come around eventually. You know, it, it literally might take a decade but they or, or two, but they will come around. And if they don't, they're toxic people. You don't want them in your life. Um, that scenario of temporarily fucking your relationship with your parents but being able to live life how you want is better than living a life for the rest of your life uh, and then uh, knowing deep down that you uh, didn't, at the, end, at the end of your life, one, uh, disappointed you, would have disappointed your parents and two, disappointed yourself, that's even worse. Um, that's my advice is get out if the truth would make it unsafe, stay if the truth would make it a little bit awkward. Um, and then, yeah, that's my advice to you, mate. I hope that helps. All right. I'm going to end it there. I'm going to continue on, uh, the podcast. I think we've kind of landed on the, uh, the spearhead supplement or Sunday seconds is going to be the name of the Patreon podcast. If you would like an extra half an hour, I'm just going to record it right now. Support me on Patreon, three bucks, six bucks, however much you can contribute. There's a discord server. And right now there is like eight uh, bonus episodes that you can blast through as well that are exclusive to Patreon. The The last episode was really good and I recommend that if you want to get a job as a in this field, whatever the fuck this field is. Uh, so thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. And I'll see you live on Twitch on Monday, tomorrow, uh, and on Wednesday as well. And i got a new video out coming out very soon. So thank you. Uh, if you're on Patreon, I'll talk to you in a second. Otherwise, I hope you have an incredibly shit one. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye.